Hello friends, it's Dylan Young, Developer Advocate at Sitecore. Today I'm joined by Sarah Riley, a Sitecore Sales Engineer at Sitecore, who came over during the BoxEver acquisition. She will run through a specific use case of using Sitecore Connect with Sitecore CDP to create segments based on various criteria and then to send those audiences over using Audience Sync to Salesforce Marketing Cloud to enable email marketing campaigns. This flow shows the power of using Sitecore CDP to collect data details across multiple channels. This could be web, mobile, or other types of channels. And then send that data via an audience sync to the rest of your best of breed marketing stack to help your organizations achieve their results. If you like today's topic, please subscribe and like today's video. Also, feel free to comment and let us know of any other use cases you would like us to cover. So with that being said, let's jump into Sarah's presentation. To start off with, this is the segment inside Sitecore CDP. We can see here it's for anybody that's had a web session in the last 30 days. Anybody that has an email, because we're going to be sending out an email. And they have a segment set up in their profile. I'll explain this in a moment. And they also have purchased an order either online or offline. That's one of the benefits of the CDP. We have offline and online data in the last 30 days with a value of more than $100 in this particular case. And um, if I want to change this here, for example, for this segment, this is a data extension against the user profile inside the Sitecore CDP. If I have a look at this here, I can change this instead to be equal to one of these values that we've set up for the segments here. So for example, I can say includes any of um, business weekday travelers or family summer travelers or anything else. And we can see here the percentage of people inside the CDP that actually have this particular value and the overall count of those two. So we can set all of this up. So instead of saying it's just not null, we're going to say we want the segment to be one of these values. This is how we can change those segments as well and then start them to run. This segment um, has some users that are part of it and one of those is Ryan in this case. So this here is Ryan's profile. Um, Ryan is a male, this is email and his date of birth and his phone numbers. And down here under his data extensions, we can see he has two values, a customer lifetime value of 57 and he's part of the segment couples retreat. So you can see all of this set up in his profile. So this segment is being exported using an audience sync inside Sitecore CDP. So this here is the audience sync to export it to Salesforce Marketing Cloud. And we can see it's using that seg segment uh, new monthly users. So we're going to go in and have a look at the setup for this audience sync. So you can see here that it's running on a schedule every 30 days starting on the 17th of February. It's using our segment new monthly users. It's notifying my email when it's complete. Here we can see that it's also, when it's completed, sending a web hook to this particular address. This address is sending a web hook into Sitecore Connect to inform Sitecore Connect that it's completed, and that will kick off an automatic workflow inside Sitecore Connect to then push that data out to Salesforce Marketing Cloud. The file that we're exporting with all the users that are part of the segment is going into Amazon S3 and the file itself is going to be JSON. I can also change this to be CSV if I want it to be. And this is how the file is being built. So for example, here we can see it's going to include email. If first name is present, it's going to include first name, same with last name, phone number, title, etc. And down here we can see we're also exporting the customer lifetime value and the segment into the file. So all of this is being exported. So that is my setup. We'll see that the last time this segment ran on the 12th of February, there were 17 people that were part of the segment and I can have a look at my logs here as well for that. Um, okay, so now we're gonna jump over to Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So this is Salesforce Marketing Cloud and in here what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be exporting these users into a segment. And we're gonna be using this segment here for CDP batch import. So here we can see this segment. It has these different fields here. These align with what is in my file that's being exported from Sitecore CDP. So for example, again, we can see first name, last name, phone number, and we can also see, for example, the customer lifetime value and the segment here. Currently in this segment, there are no users. So no one is yet in this segment. We're now going to kick off um, the audience sync, and that's then going to be sent to Sitecore Connect to populate this with users. 
So before I kick that off, we're going to have a look at the setup in Sitecore Connect. So this is the recipe that we're going to be using in Sitecore Connect. So let's go in and have a look at this. So this is triggered by a webhook. This is the same webhook I was showing you in Sitecore CDP. So this here is picking up the webhook that's sent from Sitecore CDP when the audience sync is completed. That's going to contain some details here about the audience sync. And then what's going to happen is it's we're going to do a connection to Sitecore CDP to retrieve the URL for Amazon S3 where the file itself is located. So that's what this step is doing here. It's going off to Sitecore CDP to um, get the location of the file. Then if multiple um, URLs are returned for the location of the file, we're going to loop through each of those. And then for each of those, we are going to get the file from that particular URL. So that's this step here. We're just getting the file at that, at that place in AWS. Then what we're going to be doing is uncompressing the file because it's gzipped. And if there are multiple items in that file, we're then going to loop to each of those. Generally speaking, it's just going to be one signed URL and one file that's coming back here in this case. This here is a code snippet within Sitecore Connect that allows me to write some code if I need it, and I can write it here in Python. So you can see here what's happening in this case is we're just taking that file as an input and we're exporting each of these fields that we need for Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So we're basically just breaking up um, the details that are in the file row by row. You'll see here that in this case, you know, the number of lines of code here I have is about 40. And I'm just pulling out each of those different fields and populating it if they're not null. So a very straightforward piece of code here. And then the next step here then is I'm then pushing all of those details into Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So you'll see here this connection to Salesforce Marketing Cloud is an out of the box connection inside Sitecore Connect. So I'm just going to show you quickly how this is set up. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to add a new action. And you can see here my options for adding an action inside Sitecore Connect. I can add, you know, if statements, repeat actions. I can call a function or stop the job or handle errors. Or I can do an action in an app. So I'm going to click this option here. We can see here some of the options for connected apps that are available. And if I use this drop down, you'll see there's many more apps available. There's thousands of out of the box um, applications available within Sitecore Connect. The one I'm using is Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So if I click on this, um, I'll see a number of actions that are available to me. And the one I want to use is I want to upsert um, multiple different rows into an existing data extension as a batch kind of action. So I'm using this one here. But you can see there's a number of other options here for connections I can make with Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Okay. Then I'm being asked to select a data extension that I want to use. And if I click here, you'll see I have a drop down list. This list here is all the actual data extensions that I have set up in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So you may have seen, for example, that in my Salesforce Marketing Cloud account, I had a CDP abandoned cart and a CDP batch import. So this is the one that I want to be um, inserting new rows into, inserting new customers into. Once I select this, if I then look at my primary key fields, here I'm seeing the actual fields that I've set up in that data extension inside Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So for example, I can see segment because that's part of my data extension as a custom field. I can see customer since, I can see first name, last name, and all of these fields as well. So for example, it's asking me here what my primary key is and mine is email. So we're gonna set that up. Then I can start inserting my email here. So for example, you can see how easy it is to populate th these as well using these helper functions within Sitecore Connect. So it's recommending for me to use um, an output from step seven of hashed email. And at the side here, we can see all my recipe data that I have up until this point. So I can also dive into any of these steps and see all the fields that are available in each of those. And for example, if it's email that I wanna use, I can just pull that field across. I can also populate all of these rows this way. So here I can add in all these optional fields to populate too. So for example, here it's asked me to populate segment. And once again, there's all these helper functions to make this really easy. If I wanted to um, do some data mapping at this point, I can also switch this over to be a formula and then I can do things like is present or anything else. And it's recommending for me here what the syntax should be to populate this. So you can see here as well how I can start doing some mapping of these fields if I need to do that while I'm just um, in my connection here inside Sitecore Connect. 
So that was just me showing you how easy it is to set this up. We're just going to delete this one now and use the one that I already have here. But you'll see it's set up much the same way. So here I'm using my CDP batch import data extension and all my fields here are mapped in the same way. So very straightforward. And my primary key again is email. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to run this. Okay, so we're going to press test at the top and now what's happening is it's waiting for that event to be triggered from Sitecore CDP. In this case, I'm just triggering the event directly, but when it runs on a schedule, usually what will happen is this will be triggered from Sitecore CDP. So you can see here that this is run and it has completed successfully. So we can have a look at some of the details here. You can see that um, there was a webhook received and these were the details of what we had in the webhook. So we can see here the payload, for example. Um, we can see the signed URL where the file was located. So this is just the URL for AWS where we have the file. And um, this is getting my file then from that URL, basically that action that I just did there. We're then decompressing the file because it's gzipped and then we're looping through each of the um, inputs and outputs in that file. So here we can see this is the output. This is the input of the file itself with all those details like you saw me open that file, so the email address and everything else. And here's the output here just formatted slightly for me to pick up for um, Salesforce Marketing Cloud. In Salesforce Marketing Cloud, then we passed in each of the different uh, rows with the user and all of the fields associated with them, for example. So this has all been passed into Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Okay, so let's have a look now to see if Salesforce Marketing Cloud has been updated with all of these details. Okay, so we're going to go back into our data extensions and we're going to go into CDP um, batch import and go over to records. And this time we're going to see our 17 records are in here for all the people that were in that file. So we can have a look, for example, and compare between our profile within CDP and what we have here. So for example, here's Ryan Whitting. We have here 1975 is his birthday and he's part of the couples retreat seg um, segment and 57 is his customer lifetime value. And this is the same thing that we can see here within Sitecore CDP. So this is the profile that we've basically exported over into Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So once we have all these details in Salesforce Marketing Cloud, we can then um, use these in a journey, for example, to send out an email to each of those users. This is just an example of a journey that I have for um, this particular data extension, CDP Batch Import. And here it's running on repeat, evaluating if there's any new records every day. So this is a monthly email that's going out and it's evaluating to see if there's any new records every day and then it's gonna push out that email. This is the template for the email that we're sending. Welcome to the monthly uh, newsletter. So we're going to have a look at this. And what I want to do is I just want to show you how some of those fields from CDP are being used to personalize this email for each and every user. So that's the reason that we're using Sitecore CDP to send out this email is that we want to really personalize the email and make it different for each person. So we're just going to click preview and test on this email so we can have a look at it. So here is the email that we're sending out and it's for an airline we can see. So this is the template before it's being populated with any user data. So we're going to select a user to see what it's going to look like. So we're going to go into our batch import segment and we're going to see what it looks like for Ricky first of all. So we're going to select this user. Okay, so you can see here now it's populated with the user's first name. It has an image here at the top. And we can see here we have his loyalty points. So if we have a look instead here for me, we can see my loyalty points are 62. So it's telling me that if I sign up to be part of this airline, this is an example of an email for an airline, and um, it's saying if I sign up for the loyalty program, I would have gained 62 points already. And we're basing that on that customer lifetime value that we have against each of the user profiles. This is what we have for Sarah, and she's part of the couples retreat segment. This person doesn't have a segment, neither does this person. This person is part of the family summer traveler segment. You can see she's three loyalty points. And what we're seeing here is she basically has a different image to everyone that we've had before um, because she's part of the family summer traveler segment. And again, we can see this person's part of the family summer traveler. This person's part of couples retreat segment. So we're seeing this image here. This person's part of off-peak traveler. So again, they're getting a separate image. So we can see here how the email is changing based on the customer segment. We're using the customer lifetime value and their name, first name and last name as well. If we go in and edit the content, we can see why this is happening. 
So we'll have a look first of all at this image. So you can see here a simple rule has just been set up to create dynamic content using a different image based on the segment of the user. So for example, this is the image that will show if the person's part of the Platinum membership. This is the image will show if they're part of the Family Summer Traveler. This one's for Off Peak Traveler, et cetera, et cetera. Down here then in this section, um, this text is being populated using fields that are coming from that data extension. So here we can see all the fields that are available for me to insert that are all coming from the data extension that I've set up. So in my case, I'm using the customer lifetime value down here, and then I'm using the first name, last name um, in the first part of the section. Well, that concludes today's presentation. So don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you haven't done so already. This will allow you to see the latest content that we're releasing on Discover Sitecore in the future. We'll see you next time for the next video. Thank you and goodbye.